Now continuing the sessions, what we have studied till now, we can see there, what is the sequential circuit and making comparison with the combinational circuit, types of uh, sequential circuit that is a synchronous circuit as well as the synchronous sequential circuit. Lately we have studied a storage elements one type that is a latch. In that we have studied the two different types of latches. One is called as a D latch, another one is called as a SR latch. Continuing the further, now how we can represent those latches in graphically? What we have taken earlier, it is a logic diagram. Now we are representing in graphical symbol with the rectangle box. Okay, I am specified with the input at the left hand side, output at the right hand side. For uh, both the different types, uh, that is a SR latch as well as the D latch. Input is given S sign R, output is here Q and the Q bar. Because of Q bar, we have represented it is a bubble to make that representation. Another that is a NAND gate, this is for NOR gate representation, this is for NAND gate representation because of that input should be complemented with S bar and the R bar. We have given here input is indicated with the bubble both S as well as the R. The third one what we have represented that is a D latch then we have indicated D. Q and Q bar will be the output again here it is a indicated with the bubble and this is the enable line what we have used as a C is the one input in our because control input will be used in the graphical representation. Now because of that we have shown with how to represent if it is a complement or uncomplemented input then we have to take with without the bubble if it is a complemented make with the representation of uh, it is a bubble. Now after representing the graphical representation then we will go for the next studying about the another storage elements call it as a flip flops. Now what the main difference between a latch as well as the flip flop. Latch is the uh, uh, signal level it is uh, we are representing it is signal level sensitive and it is uh, when we are considering the flip flops it is uh, controlled by a uh, clock transition and when we compare another uh, it, it is latches are said to be sensitive in the uh, level and flip flops are edge sensitive because of that we are calling uh, those are the main differences between a uh, latch as well as the flip flop. All of you know about already what is a flip flop? Flip flop is a storage device which stores one bit information either in the zero or it is in the one format. Laterly we need to go types of that is flip flops. There are four types of flip flops. One is called SR flip flop that is a set and reset mode and another one is D flip flop data a flip flop we are calling D flip flop. The third one is JK flip flop. The th fourth one is T flip flop that is a toggle flip flop. Now in detail we can study about the uh, all the flip flops. Now first we will go with the next. How? Because flip flops will be included with is one input considered as a it is a clock input we are considering because of that we should know how to represent this clock response for the latch as well as the flip flops. Now because of that here the figure A indicates for the latch response. It is a signal level now because of that where the input is high then it is indicated its output should be represented in that particular point that's why response will be shown at the signal when it is high when it is zero no changes in our output or uh, now because of that we are showing with it is a positive level this is for the first figure shows with the a for it is a latch representation now we are using with enable line because you know that in the latch we are using additional input as a enable line. Whenever our enable is high 
then only we can get the response of the output otherwise if we don't uh, don't get the output as here uh, when the low signal is there now because of that we need to move another representation that is called as a flip flop in that we are representing two different types of edge sensitive one is called positive edge sensitive another one is called negative edge sensitive now because of that we are showing in the first figure that is uh, uh, b that is represented by positive edge response positive means it clock moves from a 0 to 1 that's why we are calling it is a positive edge then we have made the mark here again when it completes from again 0 to 1 we are considering one more clock will be started this complete line will show as a one clock pulse okay for the positive again it considers next clock pulse next clock pulse depends on that whenever the edge here it is having then any input is there for any flip flop then it will change in its output until it uh, makes another trigger it will not change the output of the any flip flop that's why we are calling it is a positive edge response then negative edge response is represented by in the figure c here it changes the clock when 1 to 0 you can see here it is changing the signal from 1 to 0 that's why we are showing the edge at this point because of that we are calling it is a negative edge trigger now here it triggers at the particular point and until this complete this will call it as a one clock pulse or one clock period in that case whatever it is changes in the input we can see the output will be represented in this particular time it is same it will not change if the input is also changed it will not change in our output because after one clock pulse again it will see the input of the flip clock again it makes the respond at the negative edge clock pulse because of that we are calling it is a negative edge response now after knowing how the clock pulse will activate with the, either it is a latch or it is a uh, flip flops then we can represent in this particular format now later we will see that flip flops types now edge triggered because now we are uh, dealing with first a single sequential circuit because of that we need to go with edge triggered D flip flop ok now there are two types of edge triggered flip flops one is called as a positive edge triggered another one is called as a negative edge triggered now how to make that representation we can see already i have shown in the earlier that is a waveform how we can make the differentiation uh, representation of positive edge trigger and the negative edge trigger now here one circuit diagram which contains master slave d flip flop okay it is master slave d flip flop this is represented with the d flip flop because of that we are giving input as a d its output is represented by q because you know that d flip flop contains input as a d output as a q now because of that we should know how we are getting whatever the input we are giving we should get at the output q same because you know that data flip flop will have if input is 0 then the output will be represented by 0 if the input is 1 then the output is represented by 1 now we will check with that condition depends on that it is constructed with two latches one it is represented by as a master another represented by as a slave two latches we are taken to design d flip flop one represented by master another represented by slave now here because of flip flop we have taken here as a clock should be compulsory as a input now these two are it is a representation of 
latch. That's why we need to have a input. Control input is contains both are enable. Here also enable input is there. Here also enable input is there. Because of that, we have connected this clock should be to enable line. Now, both cannot be activated simultaneously. Because of that, we have added one call it as a inverter. These we have constructed with three things. Two latches and one it is a inverter. Now, here we have connected the inverter. When the clock is, clock input is 1. Now, we are representing clock input. It is a positive. Now, depends upon that, this latch will enable. Master latch will be enabled. Whatever the input we have given here, that will be output at the Y. Because you know that D flip-flop or D latch, whatever the input it takes, it represents output as C. Now, this will be inactive. Because we will not get here, it is activated. Because 1 makes as a 0. Here 0 means this cannot be enabled. The slave will be disabled in the particular time. Now, whatever the input you have given for the master, the output represented at the master of y is equal to 0. Still, we did not get the main output that is our Q because D is having output as a Q. Now, to get this one, what we need to make change? We have to change, clock should change from uh, 1 to 0. Clock should make change from a 0 to 1. Then, it will make 0 complement represent as 1. Then, this will be enabled. The slave will be enabled. In that particular time, master will be disabled. Now here, enabled with slave, whatever the input is there at Y, sorry, what output of the master Y, that will be input for the slave and that will produce at the output of this because we have this clock may Con convert into 0 to 1. This will enable the active uh, condition for the slave. It will disable the first master. Then we will get output at the Q that is 0. Because it is having 0, output is represented by also 0. Now whatever we have given input as a D0, output Q we got 0. At what time? At the negative clock. It is changing from 1 to 0. See, previously I have shown the clock change from 1 to 0. It is represented by a negative edge trigger. Because of that, we will get here it is a 1 to 0. It is changing. It change at the negative edge trigger. Okay. Now, because of that, we will get the master of the output, whatever, at the negative edge transition. See there, the behavior of master flip-flop, what it describes. Output may change only once. Output may change only once. When D is equals to 0 and it getting output as only once change. A change in the output is triggered at the negative edge. I have shown how it is negative edge clock. The third point, the change may occur only during negative level. Now, because of that, we have that is the, because of that we are calling it is almost negative edge triggered. It works with the, this, whatever the given diagram performs with that. Okay, this is what we have taken one condition. Next, we will go for the positive edge trigger because we know that how we have done for the negative edge trigger. We will go for the positive edge trigger, D flip-flop. Now, 
This is the diagram. Here it contains D type positive edge trigger which is having 3 SR latch. This is one latch SR. Another SR latch, this one. The third one, SR latch, this. Okay. There are three SR latches. And here we have two inputs, that is D as well as the clock. Okay. Now, output is Q and the Q bar. Because you know that you are designing for the D flip top. Because of that, D one input we have represented here. And clock is represented here and output should be represented by Q and the Q bar. How it works? Okay. Now, depends on. Now, we have to know the construction of this. D is equal to 0. When D is equal to 0. Now, what happens? When clock will be 1. When clock will be 1. Clock will be 1 means it is a positive edge triggered. Now, when clock will be 1, if this input, whatever you are considering, because this 1 input is 0, then its output's complement will be 1. Its output complement will be 1. When we are considering this as an input, all are 1. So, this is also 1, this is also 1. Then, we will get our input here as a 0. And this is also 1 because S yes, will represent it by 1. Because all 3 are 1's, 1's complement will be 0. Now, because of that, we have to take S yes, value is 1, R is 0. Then, it easily says that Q value will be 0. Q value will be 0. Q bar value will be 1. Now, because of that, you can see there how we are representing when D value is 0, clock is 1, we are getting the output, it is 0 and its complement will be 1. Now, depends on S is 1, R is 0. We have studied already NAND gate implementation of SR. Now, when R is 0, S is 1, it is in reset mode. Because of that, we will get the output here. Now, 0 here it is 1. If, if you want, you can check with that also condition. Now, here also it is written here, when the D input is 0, clock becomes 1, R changes to 0. Now, because of this, it will take it into as a consideration as a positive edge. When it is changing, again if it change D input also 1, it does not change at the output here. Now because R will be 0 only, because clock is 1, here R will be 0. If you change as a 1, it will not change in the output of Q. Because of that, we are calling it is a positive edge trigger. It changes at the clock value is 1. Now, depends upon that, we are calling how the output we are getting with the Q value. Same as a D value. Okay. Now, if I change the value, what I am changing? I am moving because clock pulse will change. Now, clock... I am making 0. Clock when I represent with 0, then I can see with that what are the changes in the other conditions. Now we have to see with that those things. Now I am changing clock value as a 0. Now it is a negative H. Now in that case when this is 0, its value will represent by R value will be 1 because anything multiplied here with 0, it is 0. Zero's complement will be 1. When it changes R as a 1, now because of that, we will not have any change in the output of the uh, D flip top. Because of that, we have to take a next change in the again clock, clock value. What I am changing? Clock again, I am making with Next representation by as a 1. When I am changing 1, it remains in the same because it will not change in between value. Now, D value I am making with 1 representation. Clock is 1. Now, what happens? S yes, will goes to. 
as a 1. Oh, sorry, S will go to as a 0. Now, here, why S will go to 0? Here, 1 into 1, 1's complement will be 0. Now, because of this 0, 8 comes to here. Anything multiply with 0, 0, 0's complement will be 1. Now, here, both are 1, 1. Clock is 1 and this value is 1. 1 into 1, 1's complement will be 0. When S is 0, R is 1, then it is in reset mode. Now, we will get here, this value is 1 and this value will be 0. Now, because of that, we will call, it is in whatever the input we have given, it is changed at the positive edge trigger with the output as 1. Depends on the S yes value will be 0. Now, because of that, we are taking the another condition. If D is equal to 1, clock goes from 0 to 1. It is changed already. I have shown. It changes on the yes, goes to 0. The circuit will uh, play as making the set mode. That is, the Q value will be 1. Now, that is what it does. This will represent by a positive edge triggered defib now how it works we have studied both the positive edge triggered defib flop as well as the negative edge defib flop then we will go for the how to represent this in the graphical format okay how we have represent the latches in the graphical representation same thing we need to go for the representing the flip flops in the form of it is a graphical representation. Now, there are two types. What we have studied? Positive edge triggered as well as the negative edge triggered. I am considering here one that is, I told that graphical symbol will be represented by a rectangle box. At the left hand side will have inputs and right hand side will have a output. Because of it is a synchronous or it is a flip flop, then we have represented input is 1, that is a D and it is a added with clock because earlier it is enable line. Now we are adding with the clock because it is a flip flop. It is represented by a positive edge trigger because of that it denotes with as a positive edge trigger. Now it is an edge trigger without bubble indicates it is a positive edge with bubble indicates as a negative edge trigger. That is the difference how we are representing a positive edge trigger D flip flop as well as the negative edge flip flop. Now here left hand side both the inputs and right hand side we have the output Q and the Q bar. Here also Q and the Q bar. Because of negative we have represented here it is a bubble. Because whenever it is a zero value it converts into 1, then it will make the changes, activate. Because of that, it is an active low signal we can call. Wherever it indicates, we have to... Because of that, how we are indicating with the arrow, now making the differentiation representation clock input. Okay? Now, after that, we will go for the other flip-flops. Now, we have studied one flip-flop, that is nothing but D. And we have represented with both, that is a positive edge trigger as well as the negative edge trigger. Next flip flop, we will call it is a JK flip flop. Now, why we are moving to study the JK flip flop? Because D is having only one input. Whatever the problem occurred in SR flip flop, still now we have not retained with that. Okay, if you have two inputs, what happens when both the inputs are 1-1? One, one? That we need to concentrate. Because of that, JK flip-flop contains with two inputs, that is J and K. Now, here, what is the different representation in the truth table? There, enable line, either 0 or 1. Here, flip-flop, we need to represent whether it is a positive edge trigger or it is a negative edge trigger. Positive edge trigger is represented by this one. When it is taken with the negative, 
Now we have to represent by it is a down arrow that indicates as a negative edge trigger. Depends upon that we can see there how we can perform with the operation for the considering JK flip flop. Now the input is given how we got this truth table we can verify. This is the circuit diagram for the JK flip flop. Now we have connected with two inputs that is J and K for the D flip flop with the containing this is the equation. Now by that we have designed our circuit diagram. D is equal to J Q bar plus K bar Q. Now because of that J I have to take as it is. It is a product term I have to take and get. It is connected with Q bar. Then it is connected with the Q bar here. It is not visible. You can see now it is connected with this line. We are calling it is a Q bar. Next plus because of that we have taken here as a OR gate. Then the another input for this OR gate is K bar Q. K bar means I have taken K is input. I have to connect with the inverter. Then I have taken the inverter here. And next we have to connect with Q. Q is having here. Then that is represented by as a input here as Q. Now after that you can see there it is connected or operation with the OR gate and it's connected to D because D is equal to this is the given equation. Now we have designed our circuit. Same thing we can represent in the graphical format. Already we know how to represent the graphical format. It is a rectangular box with the inputs as well as the outputs. We have a two inputs J and K and it is represented with two table clock. It is a positive edge trigger. Here also positive edge trigger. Because of that I have represented it is a clock will be positive edge trigger. Its outputs are Q and the Q bar. Now see there how we will get the this two table we can verify. Now considering our input whatever we are considering we will see with that a consideration. Now here inputs what we have considered both J and K are 0 0. Okay. Now here I am considering J value is 0. K value is 0. Both are 0 0. When both are 0 0 what happens we have to see. Now depends upon that we have to define what is the value of Q and the Q bar. If I consider Q is 0, Q bar is 1. Okay. Now depends upon that what we have to see the end. Now J is 0, K is 0. What is Q and Q bar value? We know. Now because of that when we make the connection see here I am considering both are 0 0. When both are 0 0 I can substitute in this equation J and Q bar plus K bar and Q. When both are 0 0 ok how I am getting the D is equal to Q because I will substitute J value is 0 and K value is 0. J value 0 means this we will get as a 0. What about this one? Here I will get K bar. K bar means K value is 0. Its complement value will be 1. Because of that it multiplies Q. I will get Q is the equation. Because of that when J and K are 0. Its output is represented by a Q. What it indicates Q means its output will be Q. Because of that I am represented here Q. Okay. Here I have shown with the two different. One is Q of T. Another one is Q of T plus 1. Q of T is a present state. Q of T plus 1 is the next state. Whenever next state also, what it does? It is not changing the value. Because of that, we have to represent it is nothing but Q. Q is nothing but Q of 
T I have represented here. Okay. Now when both are zero zero is over, what we got the true table. I think all of you have followed with the positive edge figure. What I made the difference input representing here. It is a above arrow. Now next row I will go with the second row. I will change with J is equal to zero and K is equal to one. Now. When I am changing j is equal to zero and k is equal to one, what happens? It will be we have to check. Now here I am substituting j is zero and k is one here. This value j is zero and k is one. Now what happens in this circuit? Uh, sorry, in this equation, when you are considering j value zero. J value zero means it is zero. When you are considering k value is one, one's complement will be zero. When zero multiplied with q, it is also zero. Totally, I will get here this value will be zero. See here, I have written here d value is represented by a zero. Now the output of this we have represented with zero. It is in set mode. This is in no change. We have represented. This is no change. This is in reset format. Now depends upon that. I am considering the next row. That is third row. Which is represented. J value is 1. K value is 0. J value is 1. K value is 0. Now I have considered with another input that is whatever it is represented here. Now we need to see what will get the output. Substitute these two values in our given equation. This is our equation. J is 1. Okay. K is 0. Now because of that J is 1 means J into substitute with we will get here Q bar here. 0's complement will be 1. It's multiplied with you will get Q. Q bar plus Q. All of you know that A plus A bar value will be 1. Boolean equation you know. Because of that D value is represented by it's 1. Because of that we got here output is in the form of 1. Because of that we are calling it is in set mode. It is in set mode. Now, all of you got, I think, what we got the equation from this. Q bar plus Q is equal to 1. T value 1 uh, I got means output of this value also 1. Because of that, in the truth table we have represented by 1. Because of that, we are calling it as a set mode. Next, both inputs are considered with 1, 1. That is the last one what we need to check when both are 1 1 ok when both are 1 1 what happens in the given equation both are 1 1 now here j is 1 means you will get k bar value uh, sorry q bar plus what is k bar k bar means 0 this will goes 0 then it will be represented by what is the value only I will get with a Q bar. When I am getting Q bar. Now we have to see here D value is represented by Q bar. What is that? I have represented here Q of T bar. That is nothing but present state. It complements or toggle. We can call it is either complement or it is a toggle. Okay. Now, depends upon that, we can represent it is in the form of truth table. That's why I have represented its complement. Q bar I got for the T. Now, how we have designed a GK flip-flop using the D flip-flop? How we have represent the truth table using this equation? All of you have followed with this. Now, next we will move to Another type of flip flop, call it as a T flip flop. The last one that is a T flip flop, it is also called as a T 
octagonal flip flop. Okay. Now, previously I have studied the JK flip flop. You know about it is defined by as a T flip flop. Now, why we are calling it is a T flip flop? In in the SR, whatever the one one input is, it is indeterminate or it is invalid. Those overcome with a JK flip flop. It is in the complement or it is in the toggle form. The third flip flop we are designing as a toggle flip flop. Here, from the JK, already we have designed JK. What I am considering? Only one input, T input. Because of that, I am representing both are concatenated and made with the one representation as a, it is input 1. Okay. The clock, it is a symbol, whatever graphical symbol we are calling. Now, it is from the JK. Just combining both input, either both may be 0 or both may be 1. We can see there, either both are zeros or both are 1s. Now, depends upon that, we can define our JK flip-flop with this condition. Now, depends upon that, it can be designed from the D flip-flop also. You can see here. Now, what is the changes? D as it is, I have represented here. Now, we have a one equation. D is equal to T Q bar plus T bar Q. It is given. That is nothing but you can represent in the form of T X or it is represented as a T. Sorry. Q. T X or Q. Now depends upon that we are considered designing this Q diagram with the X or gate. One input as a T. Another input as a Q. It is contained with another input here. Now, two inputs are given for the XOR. Now, this we can design for the T flip flop using with the D. Directly, we can convert to as its graphical symbol. Only one input. I can give directly input. Clock either positive or negative. Depends upon that. You have to represent. Its output is represented by Q and the Q bar. Now, here we have a truth table. Okay. Again, truth table contains where the clock is one input, T is another input. What is this represent? This represents as a next state. Q of T plus 1 will be indicated as what? It is a next state. Q of T will be present state. Now, depends on the input. Is it a positive? That's why I have shown with the above arrow. Now, depends on the input, how it changes, we can see in our T input. Why we are calling toggle input, or toggle flip-flop also, we can know. First input, when T is equal to 0, substitute in this equation. When T is equal to 0. Now, input T is equal to 0 means, this value makes 0. And this value makes as a T bar into Q. T bar into Q means T bar value will be 1 into Q. Because of that we will get it is nothing but Q. See when T is equal to 0, T we got as a Q. What I have denoted here, it is nothing but Q. Depends on that we are calling it is nothing but Q of T. No change in the state. Whatever it is the present state, next state remains change, uh, no change. Because of that, we have to represent it is a Q of T. Next, I am changing the input as a 1. When I am changing the input as 1, then I have to see with that what the changes it makes. Now, here T is 1 means this value is 1. Then I will get here nothing but Q bar. This value will be 0. When this value will be 0, then what is we are represented here? You can see there. T is equal to 1. D is represented by a Q bar. Now, here also we have represented with Q bar. Same thing in the 
to table also we have represented it is a q of t bar now depends upon that we are saying it is a complement or it is a toggle the output whatever earlier there it complements if it is zero it converts into one if it is one it converts to zero depends on that present state it will change its next state that is what we are to take that's why we are calling t flip flop is nothing but it is a toggle flip flop i think all of you got the how we have designed the circuit how we have represented the graphical symbol how we have represented by its truth table or the function table now we have studied all the four here we got two that is one is no change another one is complement now depends upon that we have to call this flip flop will be mainly this is changed with one that is the output call it as a complement or it is a toggle it is called as a t flip flop now after knowing studying about all the three different types of flip flops now we can see the characteristics of the flip flops or it can be represented by a tabular form whatever we have studied all the three flip flop d flip flop j k and t we have to represent what it says characteristics table it says about its properties its functions now depends upon that we have represented it is in the form of tabular form first i have represented by with the jk flip flop what is the characteristic equation now depends upon that j and k are the inputs now it is representing q as a q plus t now we are uh, representing it is a t plus 1 is the uh, represented as a next state i already i told q of t is a present state now we need to represent what are the input what is the next state what the action carried out this says that what is the action for that particular inputs that's why we are showing its properties its functionalities now depends upon that when both the inputs are zero zero all of you know that it is remained in the same state because of that we are writing its action as an no change in the state because of that we are calling no change in the state next we are taking input is changed when it is a zero and one is nothing but it is like yes and r when r value is one you know that it is in reset because of that we have to represent output in the form of zero here i need to represent its action will be reset mode same thing we are represented by one zero one zero means yes value will be one yes value one means it is in set mode because of that we have to call here it is one the action is written by as a set mode next comes to both inputs are one one when both are one one we got it is a q bar q bar is nothing but present state because of that we have to represent it is a q of t bar it is a complement okay or toggle action can be written either complement or the toggle next we need to go with d flip flop what we have to represent input is only one that is a d its next state will be represented by q of t plus 1 what the action here it is indicated when d is zero the output remains same what we have given the input because of that we are calling it is a data input it is in reset mode because we got whatever the d is zero output becomes zero when the d input is one it we got here it is in one because of that we are calling its functionalities it is properties will be in the set mode same thing the last flip flop what we have represented here is nothing but a t flip flop t 
P is defined with the one input. Its characteristic equation, whatever we have uh, written here, it is a uh, nothing but Q of T plus 1 indicates as an next state again what the action is carried out. Now, here the T input is 0, then it does not change the state, it remains in the same state because of that whatever the present state, either 0, it remains in the 0 or if it is 1, it remains in the 1. Because of that we are calling it is no change in the state. Next, when we are changing this input as a 1, then its output is represented by as a Q bar, that is Q of T. It complements the output or toggles the output. See there, whatever we have studied, all the three flip-flops, it performs main three operations because you see there, these two are, belongs to these two and these two are belongs to these two. Now totally we have three modes. No change means nothing is changed. Because of that no need to consider it is an one of the output. We can consider three different output. One is reset mode, another is set mode, another one is a complement or toggle. There, there are three main outputs in our all the flip flops that what we are considering now depends upon that each will perform with different. Here it performs with all four operations. JK is the major. It takes all four operations in one only. This is separating two operations in D, another two operations in T. In SR it is having one disadvantage when both inputs are one one it does not define the valid output because of that it is invalid output. Now that's why mainly we are using these are the main three flip-flops in our designing synchronous sequential circuit. Okay, now this complete this session. We will continue in the next session discussing about how to find a characteristic equation in the next session.